Yes, it's cricket time now on the Sportsmax Zone. Cricket West Indies on Monday naming the West Indies A squad for the historic T20 Tour of Nepal. Set to bowl off this weekend. The Barbadian Roston Chase has been named captain with Dominic and Alec Athenes as his deputy. The West Indies Academy standouts Joshua Bishop and Kadeem Aline are also in the squad, which will be monitored for final selection to the T20 World Cup squad. Here is that full list. Roston Chase Captain Athenes, Vice Captain Fabian Allen, Kadeem Aleem, Joshua Bishop, Casey Carty, Johnson Charles, Mark Dial, Andre Fletcher, the veteran, Matthew Ford, Obed McCoy, Gouda Keshmoti, Kimo Paul, O'Shane Thomas, and the leg spinner Hayden Walsh Jr. The Jamaican opening batsman Brandon King was uh, considered for the team but is recovering from an injury he suffered during the West Indies Championship, while the Trinbegonian hard hitting lefty Evan Lewis made himself unavailable for selection. Now, it has been a while, but the captain is back, Fazir Mohammed. What do you make, Faz, of uh, this squad going to Nepal? Great to have you back on the show, Faz. Good to, good to be back, good to be back. That's the absentee captain, for, 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 what, for what it's worth. Uh, but, but yeah, and, and you understand why the, the, the squad is constructed that way, because of course, a lot of the first choice players are involved in IPL. And, and you just mentioned the injury uh, to Brandon King, who's recovering. So it's an opportunity, yes. And especially now with that Sudan Orion thing being settled once and for all, uh, because it has been identified by coach Darren Sami that there are a couple of spots that he thinks are available. There's concerns about maybe the consistency and effectiveness of the bowling. So, so maybe more of the bowlers from the squad will be looking forward to, to maybe breaking in to the actual squad to be announced on May the 1st. Yeah, and uh, looking at this squad, I know the coach Darren Sami and the Cricket West Indies hierarchy have spoken about this tour as an opportunity for players to fine-tune them uh, themselves for the T20 World Cup. But I suspect that some of these players may not necessarily be in line and are being rewarded for their pretty solid performances in the recent uh, West Indies 4-day championship. Players like Bishop and uh, Kadeem Aline. I, I wouldn't think that they are, you know, battling for a World Cup spot, are they? I wouldn't think so. But as, as you said, every platform is an opportunity uh, because you, you, you're taking on Nepal, who, who would not be one of the heavyweights of the game, but it's an historic tour, the first time ever that the Westerners are playing in that part of the world, in the, in the, in the shadow of the Himalayas. So it's an opportunity. Every game, every time you get a chance, whether it's with an A team, whether it's with an academy team that has just been announced for a tour of Ireland, there, there's always a, an opportunity to make a statement, to keep your, yourself in the eyes of the selectors, keep yourself in the mind of the Caribbean people and the Caribbean media as well. So yeah, the majority will not be in contention for a place in the T20 World Cup, but that doesn't preclude an, an excellent performance, an excellent effort, ensuring that they stay in the selectors' minds. Yeah. Do you think the veteran Andre Fletcher, as a wicketkeeper batsman, experienced and has been a World Cup winner himself, is being seriously considered for a World Cup spot as he goes I on this tour? I would be surprised uh, if, if he was being seriously considered. But but again, I think they're keeping their options open. You've got Johnson Charles, who's there as well, who's been in the T20 squad. Uh, when when you look at the, the, the those you would consider first choice players, Nicholas Puran, you think would be automatic as a wicketkeeper batsman if that becomes necessary. You even have a Shea Hope uh, as, as another option. So I, I think it's it's marginal, but but still a fantastic performance in front and behind the stumps by Andre Fletcher won't do him any harm. Right, and Faz, your views on the inclusion of the Windies Academy players, they are Joshua Bishop and Kadeem Allen. Your thoughts on, you know, just Windies' decision to put them in this team against Nepal? And just extending the point I was making with Lance uh, Mariah, it, it's really a fantastic opportunity for them. And, and this is what you want to see. You want to see our young emerging talents because the, the fact that you, you do have an academy team, you do have a CCC, uh, and the fact that there was such an exciting finale 
to the regional first class tournament, probably the most exciting finish, the closest finish for a long, long time. I mean, the top five teams separated by just about 12 points, uh, lots, uh, lots of action, lots of drama towards the end. The CCC played their part, uh, the, the academy played their part. So, so yes, these players being given opportunities tells them that they are in the eyes of the selectors, that they have them in mind. And therefore, it's up to these players, if given the opportunity in Nepal, because you certainly think with five T20 matches that they will get an opportunity along the way, it's really a chance for them to make a mark, to make some sort of impact moving forward deeper into the year. Yeah, one player that, you know, I really enjoy watching, Hayden Walsh Jr., but of course, you know, his performances has been a bit inconsistent. Sometimes he's extremely hot. And then for some time, you know, you won't hear about him. His performances don't um, live up to par. What do you make of, you know, him for this World Cup, Fats? Well, if I can remain consistent, I'm delighted that he is in the squad. Because I think Hayden Walsh is the sort of cricketer who shows that enthusiasm. Whether with the ball, okay, he's, a, he's expensive at times. He's a wrist spinner. These things happen. He's always brilliant in the field. He's always energetic. I think he reflects the attitude you want to see all the time in our West Indies cricketers. And therefore, I'm glad to see that he's been given another opportunity. So, yes, he remains on the fringe, like Fabian Allen, like Gurukesh Muti, uh, like so many other spinners in and around the West Indies T20 setup. But all you can do is perform to your best and show the right attitude when given the opportunity. And I expect that Hayden Walsh, among the rest of your squad, will certainly do so. Faz, you just mentioned Fabian Allen. Um, your thoughts on him? He's been out of international cricket now for a while. A player that um, can be a big impact player. We've seen him, both, both with bat and ball, um, produce you know, significant performances in the past. But um, somehow he hasn't you know, commanded his spot in the West Indies team in recent times. It seems an interesting one, Lance, because you watch Fabian Allen, and, and yes, a good, good, good spinner, decent bowler, but there are, there are very few cleaner strikers of the ball lower down the order than Fabian Allen. And when he's in the mood, when he's on song, he's absolutely devastating with the bat, which is what you need towards the end of a T20 innings. But, but again whether it's because of disillusionment, distraction with, with other things, franchise formats and so many other things, because we have to keep in mind that the players are mindful of their financial security. They, they want to ensure that, okay, if I'm on the fringe and I'm not getting selected, maybe I should sign this contract and if it means making myself unavailable, well, so be it. So, so yes, it, it's a bit of a curious situation with Fabian Allen because a couple of years ago, you thought of him as almost a certainty, like Obed McCoy, for example, in a West Indies T20 squad. Yeah, that's the point I was getting at. Faz, um... I know a lot has been made of getting the players who aren't playing IPL cricket and getting an opportunity here for some competitive cricket. Uh, that being said, Nepal isn't exactly the kind of opposition that will charm our cricketers for T20 World Cup. Nepal are ranked 16th in the world at the moment. And, uh, you know, let's say our batters dominate the Nepal bowling. Um, I don't know that we can read too much into that, but I guess uh, given the circumstances, um, Competitive cricket is competitive cricket, and they, they need to get themselves out there playing some, some cricket to sharpen themselves. Absolutely. And, and rest assured, Nepal will see this as their opportunity. They will say, OK, it's not the first choice West Indies team. It's an A team, but it's under the ban of the West Indies. And, and therefore, they will come after the West Indies. They will come gunning at the West Indies, looking to, to make a strong statement themselves. And, and therefore, yes, the, the reality is that it's not your, your elite list of either players or teams. But competitive cricket is competitive cricket. And really, again, at the risk of sounding repetitive, you can only play the opponents in front of you, and you can only be judged by the, the way you play the game, the nature of the pitches, the conditions. All of that will be, will be factors taken into consideration, even if we're talking, Lance, about the composition of the 15 for the World Cup because they're going to have to take into consideration what sort of pitches 
other West Indies going to be playing on? Is it going to favor slow bowling? Is it going to be nice, flat, hard, and true, like most of the IPL services, where you're getting scores consistently over to 10, to 20, to 30, upwards up to 80? So, so all of these elements mean that, yes, you're not in, in the frame automatically for selection. You're going to be judged well. It's only Nepal. But then again, you have to go out there and play to your very best and let that the results do, 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 do the talking for you. Yeah, for as like, like Fabian Allen, Evan Lewis, probably three or four years ago, was seen as a West Indies batter that um, was one for the future based on how dominant he could be and he could just take opening bowlers apart with his, with his shot-making ability, um, declaring himself unavailable for this, this series. What's going on with him? He, he's in your country. He's in my country, but I don't communicate with him. But I, I can only go, Lance, with the, with the facts. And the facts are that Evan Lewis has not played for the West Indies in a T20 International since the debacle of the last World T20 when the West Indies lost to Ireland by nine wickets and didn't even get into the main draw of the World T20. And before that, as you know only too well, he had made himself unavailable after the similar debacle of the World T20 in the UAE. So basically, you're talking about a player who has been given consideration, even though he's never available outside of World T20 tournaments. So I'm actually surprised that Cricket West Indies felt it necessary to make a statement that, that Evan Lewis is unavailable, because I would think, based on the evidence that I've just presented, even if he was available, I wouldn't consider him. And, and finally, Faz, a, a lot of West Indies fans are divided on, on Ruston Chase. Um, he has been named as captain of this, of this tour team. Uh, your thoughts on Ruston and uh, his um, outlook for possible T20 World Cup spot? I think Ruston Chase suffers for the fact that he seems to be just an ordinary fella. Somebody who might just bounce up at the corner of any street, anywhere in the Caribbean, and just have a chat with him. He's not that explosive, dramatic, spectacular type of cricketer, but he's always there, thereabouts. And I think he's a very good cricketer. I think he's someone who's adjusted his game, moving into the T20 franchise with the St. Lucia Kings, and someone who's been able to make the necessary adjustments. And, and yes, he suffers in comparison to the star boys, to the big hitters, the power hitters, the spectacular performers. But invariably, he's there, thereabouts, making a useful contribution whenever the top order fails. And we've seen that happen at times, notably in those last two World T20s that I mentioned. So, so yes, there will be that discussion that he's not worth his place in a World T20 World Cup team for the West Indies. But I would say, look at his performances, look at what he's been able to contribute along the way, and you'd have to say that he's still worthy of some consideration. Thanks, Faz, as usual. Well said. Great talking to you back on the Sportsmax Zone. And uh, we'll be watching this Nepal tour keenly as uh, the West Indies players get themselves ready, many of them for the T20 World Cup. Thank thanks, Faz. We'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.